the Dallas Stars have reclaimed the top spot in the Central Division after a 5-2 win over the St. Louis Blues. And on today's episode, we'll be highlighting some players who have broken some more Dallas Stars and NHL records. We'll also be talking about what the Stars can do in order to win tonight in their regular season finale. All of this and more on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bing bong. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Thursday, April 13th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We're always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. And it's another day and another Dallas Stars win. They have now won five consecutive games with one more remaining on the schedule tonight uh, back at the American Airlines Center, closing out the season against the St. Louis Blues. But the Dallas Stars had a excellent evening at the Enterprise Center last night against the same St. Louis Blues. We saw two Dallas Stars players uh, who have been circulating this podcast and the NHL news cycle in general as of late with their excellent play. But we see two different guys uh, break some Hall of Fame records and some NHL records, starting with Miro Haskinen, who now with 73 points holds the record for the most points scored in a single season by a Dallas Stars defenseman surpassing Hall of Famer Sergei Zuboff, the most recent Dallas Star or Minnesota North Star to have their number retired at the AAC. Zuboff had 71 points back in the 2005-2006 season, and Haskinen came into this game with 71 points, just needing one, but he he went ahead and uh, got two. He double-dipped in terms of points during this game, and he is also now the franchise record holder for the most assists in a single season with 62, surpassing Craig Hartsburg, who had 60. And, and this is not just for the Dallas Stars, but for the entire Stars franchise, whether they be located in Dallas or Minnesota. Pretty impressive for Haskinen. And also, fun fact, Craig Hartsburg, back when he was a member of the Minnesota North Stars, used to wear the number four. And Miro Haskinen also wears the number four. Pretty special uh, accomplishment and milestone for Miro Haskinen for both of these uh, and what has been a phenomenal season for the Dallas Stars premier defenseman. One of his points, of course, came on the power play. Really, when you think about it, both of them did because his first point in the game actually came on a six-on-five delayed penalty. Uh, He passes the puck to Joe Pavelski, who is you know, coming off the bench as Wedgwood heads to the bench to be that sixth attacker. Joe Pavelski just lets that puppy fly from the blue line. And Haskinen, of course, gets the assist. Haskinen, of course, been a massive catalyst for the Stars on the power play, who went three for five uh, on the man advantage on Wednesday night, I might add. But Haskinen is second on the team in power play points, only behind Jason Robertson. Again, continuing his string of dominance here over the past month. Uh, And a few weeks change, number four, playing some of the best hockey of his NHL career down the stretch of this regular season. But it wasn't just him. Jason Robertson, again, had another special evening. Three points. He now sits at 109 on the season. And he now uh, holds the record for the most points in an NHL season by a player who was 23 or younger, surpassing Jeremy Roenick and Jimmy Carson. Very, very special, special accomplishment for Jason Robertson. And it's another great reminder that he's putting up these types of numbers. He's putting up MVP type numbers at age 23, only his third season in the NHL. I I mean, it's hard to believe it, but somehow the best is still yet to come for Jason Robertson. He continues to set the league on fire. He is also playing his best hockey, it seems, this season 
heading into the playoffs, into the Stanley Cup postseason, uh, where whichever team gets matched up with the Stars in the first round is going to have their hands full with Miro Haskinen and Jason Robertson, who it doesn't look like Robo is going to be passing Bobby Smith in terms of points scored in a single season for franchise history. Of course, Smith doing that back in the early 80s as a member of the Minnesota North Stars, although I guess Jason Robertson could have a five-point night against the St. Louis Blues tonight. I don't see it happening, but I would love to be wrong about that, and that would only tie him uh, with the record. Of course, if he wanted to set a new record, he would have to have a six-point evening, which, again, feels a little far-fetched to me, but, again, would love to be wrong in that regard. But I think even if it doesn't happen this season, which it doesn't look like it's going to, I I think it's going to happen eventually. Again, Jason Robertson, I don't really know if you can say he's scratching the surface anymore. I feel like last year you could say he was just starting to scratch the surface. I feel like now he has shown us what he's truly capable of. And this is kind of, I don't want to say the bar because I still think he could go higher. But I I think we're finally starting to see Jason Robertson enter uh, into what should be a very fun and exciting prime of his career. And so I imagine that that record of 114 points in a single season is not safe for much longer. And I feel like we'll see Jason Robertson surpass that record here over the next few seasons. And even if he doesn't do it this season, it should not negate nor take away from the special and monumental campaign. This is for him as a player at at an individual level, but also just in terms of franchise history and Dallas stars history. Uh, I mean, we never really thought we'd ever see someone be greater than Mike Madonna in terms of of records and accomplishments. But here comes this kid in year three already starting to rewrite the Dallas Stars history books from a forward perspective. Incredible to see Uh, another day, another game that we're talking about, Jason Robertson and his excellence. And I'm excited to see what he can do in the playoffs because I know it's a completely different game, but now he has some playoff experience after last season. And, you know, he and the rest of the team are going to be fired up and ready to go when that puck drops at the AAC for game one. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about another special player who had another groundbreaking night for the Dallas Stars. We'll talk about Wyatt Johnston and his first NHL career multi-goal game right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever, a Built Bar. And if you're like me, you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise taste, well, I've got just the thing for you, Built Bars and Built Bar Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. They taste so amazing, you won't think that they're good for you. And what makes a Built Bar taste so good, you might ask? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably delicious flavors such as churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream, and I'm not quite sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros, and that's even better is that they're actually healthy for you with only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get your own box. For years, we've been saying you can order your Built bars at Built.com, but now you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club, and you can still get your specialty flavors at Built.com. I want to thank you again for making the Locked on Stars podcast your first listen every single day, continuing to talk about last night's game. The Stars take down the St. Louis Blues by a score of 5-2. to two. A little bit of a back-and-forth affair in the first period between these two teams within the Dallas Stars would use three power play goals in the second period to assert themselves in this game, and they would never look back. But the scoring... Uh, in this game was kind of all over the place, but one guy who had his fingerprints on several different plays was 19-year-old rookie Wyatt Johnston, who scored his 22nd and 23rd goals of the season, the first of the game, and also the fourth of the game. Johnston putting the game out of reach uh, around the middle part of the second period for the Stars on the power play. A great night for the rookie, who had gone, it had been a little bit of time since he had scored his last goal, but he absolutely tore into the Blues and, of course, is looking to join the list of players who were starting to catch fire before the postseason. This was Wyatt Johnston's first multi-goal game of his young NHL career. We've seen him score plenty of goals this season, but surprisingly, this is the first time that he scored more than one in a game, which 
took me off guard, but I, I guess that it is true. Uh, and he's just done it so much with one goal a game uh, that I haven't really noticed. He's still incredibly productive, but the first of many multi-goal games for the youngster Wyatt Johnston. Really exciting stuff to see in what it had been 10 or 9 games or so since we had seen 53 find the back of the net, but it's great to see him getting involved in the offense. And, of course, the first goal, uh, a sneaky little play where the puck just kind of gets loose around the net, and Johnston using his awareness and hockey IQ to pick up the puck, put it on net, and eventually does go in. And the second goal, a very, very nice play on the power play, a big moment in the game as well, uh, coming off of Sammy Blaze, uh, double minor for high sticking. The Stars had already scored a goal, courtesy of Rope Hints on the power play to put themselves up three to two. But with the double minor, of course, the you know the, the Stars stay on the man advantage, and then Wyatt Johnson just a, you know less than a minute later is able to score and put the Stars up two. Uh, with the power play opportunity and extended power play opportunity. Uh, absolutely beautiful sequence for the Stars, masterful sequence from both power play units, of course, hence being a part of that top unit. And then White Johnston kind of playing that bumper role a lot of times on that second unit and beautiful passing play from Tyler Sagan and Evgeny Dodonov to set White Johnston up for that goal. And speaking of Dodonov, it was really that entire Stars third line that was playing very well. Second, third line, whatever you want to call them. I know that they're somewhere in that middle six, but Jamie Ben, a quietly impressive night with two points. And of course, Evgeny Dodonov gets that assist on the Wyatt Johnston power play goal in the second period. And I mean, this is one of those lines that it feels like they've been a little up and down, really more up than down. And a down night for them is just them not really getting scoring or points. And sometimes those points just happen to come from the top line or they come from a defenseman, so on and so forth. But this line had a very good evening in St. Louis on Wednesday, and the Stars need Wyatt Johnston and this entire line to be very good because I think that that helps take the team's play, takes their game to the next level and causes a whole new set of problems for the opposition. Of course, any team that the Stars play in the postseason, obviously the game plan is to go at that top line, find a way to shut down Hintz, Roberts, and Pavelski, but if this other line of Johnston, Ben, and Dodonov can find a way to be equally as effective, that is going to cause coaching staffs and defensemen and goalies tons of headaches during the Stanley Cup playoffs. And we're seeing these guys kind of, you know, come into form. It feels like Jamie Ben really has been, uh, you know, steady all season long. He hasn't really ever dipped in production. Wyatt Johnston, as you would expect with a 19 year old rookie, has had some ebbs and flows, but I, I feel like. It's been more good than bad, and, and that's really saying a lot, again, given his age and given the production that we've seen. And, of course, Evgeny Dodonov, one of the stars, trade deadline acquisitions, still, you know, at, in some ways, finding himself with this team, but a, a very nice complimentary piece on that line, on the star second power play unit, and just overall a, a good presence on the team who makes some smart plays, makes some smart passes here and there, uh, and a really nice piece to go alongside Ben and Johnston, who have really been inseparable since the beginning of this season. But if that line can get hot, I mean, it's it's going to cause so many problems for the opposition in the playoffs. And if you get that mixed with the top line production and that mixed with Miro Haskin and playing well and Thomas Harley playing well, and then you get a good outing from Jake Ottinger, it's going to be a tough outing for any opponent. Uh, whether it's the Seattle Kraken in round one or the Minnesota Wild or the LA Kings, doesn't really matter who the Stars match up against. That They have all of these pieces that mesh really well together. And that's even something that Tyler Sagan brought up during his post-game interview uh, during the TNT broadcast of last night's game. He, he was asked by Keith Yandel on that TNT panel about what, what comparisons or really what similarities there were between this year's Dallas Stars team and the 2011 Boston Bruins team where Tyler Sagan was a member uh, of that team that eventually went on to win the Stanley Cup. And one of the things Sagan mentioned is depth. That Bruins team had a ton of depth, and this Dallas Stars team also just has weapons scattered all throughout the roster. Even if it's not the biggest names or the guys who are putting up the flashiest numbers, the Stars, top to bottom, especially in the forward department, are loaded with guys who can get the job done. And it's impressive to see Wyatt Johnston add his name to a stacked list of really talented Dallas Stars forwards. And I'm excited to see what he and Jamie Benn can do for the remainder of this season. Really just tonight's game 
And then, of course, once the playoffs get going, you know the captain is going to be the anchor of the team and the anchor of the forward groups. And I can't wait to see why Johnson continue to follow in his footsteps. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, but when we come back, we'll look ahead to the regular season finale tonight. The Dallas Stars take on the St. Louis Blues in the final game of the regular season. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, and Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over tickets and get hyped for all the fun that you're going to have. The NHL playoffs are right around the corner. The Dallas Stars are hosting the first two games of their first-round series, and you can get tickets at game time. Game time is the place for last-minute ticket deals, so forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the final time this regular season, we're here talking about the Stars playing a hockey game. And then we'll, we'll be strapping on the skates, strapping on the helmets for the postseason. But the Dallas Stars have a quick turnaround. So they'll face off yet again against the St. Louis Blues. But this time, they'll be doing it in their home barn and also looking still to pick up two points in hopes that they can clinch that central division crown. The Stars will ha have a pretty good fighting chance in this game. They will have their number one goalie. Back in net, Jake Gottinger will likely be getting the start with Scott Wedgwood getting the win for the Stars on Wednesday night in St. Louis. A great game from Wedgwood, by the way. Uh, I feel like that has kind of flown under the radar given the performance of everyone else on the team. But Wedgwood saves 16 of 18 shots in the Stars. Again, making Wedgwood not have to work too hard. 18 shots, certainly not a ton to face. Uh, and made some pretty impressive saves, especially early in the game. The Blues were generating some good looks. But Wedgwood was able to keep his composure, keep his poise, and was able to play incredibly well. But the Stars will give Jake Ottinger one final tune-up before the playoffs, where he will be ready to shine yet again and make another bold statement for himself and his team. And this is a pretty evenly matched game in terms of fatigue, because the Stars are coming off of a back of night one of a back-to-back, -back, and so are their opponents. And it's literally the team they just played. So this is a team that they're familiar with, a team that they know they can beat. They've already done it twice this season. And honestly, after that first period, it was all Dallas Stars. I don't really know. I mean, the Blues just kind of took their foot off the gas, it seemed. They also found themselves uh, in quite the, the debacle or the situation with penalties. And so if the Stars can find a way to draw a ton of penalties and draw those power play opportunities, I think that they're going to be just fine in this game, especially with Jake Ottinger in net. So obviously they need to find a way to pick up two points in this game. And then they have to leave everything else up to fate with the avalanche situation. They have to hope for the best, hope and pray that something will fall their way in terms of the results over these next couple of days for Colorado and their opponents. And it's so tricky because we talked about this yesterday. Who knows how hard the Winnipeg Jets are going to play in this game. They're the road team heading to Colorado, already a tough task in and of itself, but I mean, the Winnipeg Jets aren't really playing for much now at this point in the season. They've clinched a playoff berth, but they are stuck in a wild card spot. They cannot go higher and they really, you know, can't go too much lower uh, because they are the final team that has gotten into the postseason. And so they are locked into the spot that they are at. So how hard are they really going to play in this game? Of course, uh, I mean, it's a Rick bonus team, so I can't imagine that they're just going to straight up sell this game, if you will, but I mean, how hard are they really going to be going uh, up against this Colorado Avalanche team who is going to be playing with everything they have in order to try and get this win and give themselves the best chance to win the Central Division to get that more ideal first-round matchup, likely against the Seattle Kraken. But then even Friday night, we don't really know what the situation looks like with the Nashville Predators. I expect the Predators would actually play hard because it's the final game of the regular season. They're going to be at home. They're going to want to send their fans home happy one final time this season, but 
again, the Avalanche are also going to be playing incredibly hard. So who knows what these matchups are going to look like in terms of the intensity on both sides of the ice. But I mean, all we can do as stars fans and all the stars as a team can do is take care of their business and then hope for the best. They, they just need to win this game, get two points, and then hope the Avalanche drop one of their next four points. Even if it's an overtime loss, that's enough. That's all the Dallas Stars need. And it would ease my mind, and I know it would ease the uh, the minds of many others if that just happened tonight. If the Stars get a nice, clean regulation win against the St. Louis Blues, one final tune-up before the playoffs, and if somehow the Winnipeg Jets could get an overtime win at Ball Arena, uh, I think that they would be doing the Stars quite the favor. And it's another opportunity for Rick Bonus to help his old team out uh, yet again, like he did a few nights ago, taking down the Minnesota Wild. But... I mean, the Stars uh, are, are looking for a win here. And again, another great opportunity to fine-tune everything and make sure everybody is set and ready to go before the big dance. And also, it appears that we'll be getting the return of Mason Marchment. Haven't seen official confirmation on that just yet, but a lot of rumors of, uh, not even rumors, but confirmation that he's been skating with the team and, and the coaching staff and Pete DeVore saying that they want Mason Marchment to get at least one game in before the playoffs. So that would have to be this game. So, Looks like we might see number 27 come back out on the ice, which would be a great sight to see for him, for the Stars, and for Stars fans, having the complete team set and ready to go. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We're always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also follow us on social media. Just search Locked On Stars on Instagram and Twitter. We'll, of course, be back here tomorrow uh, discussing the results of this game and, of course, where the Stars stand, If depending on if they win, if they lose, and, of course, depending on what happens with Colorado and Winnipeg. But I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. <laughs>